Hello, welcome back to Daily Dose of Frost Language. So as we promised yesterday, we're going to cover threads in Rust. So a brief introduction. A thread is just like an interface in other languages. An interface is like rules. It defines rules. Every struct is going to obey what you should be able to do. So typically behaviors. So for example, if you have an animal, a dog is an animal and a cat is also an animal. They have some things in common. So those things they have in common will be defined in an interface that each of those animals will implement. For example, they can walk. So it will be a type of rule that they will all obey. Something that they can all do. And the best way to implement that is to have an interface that all of them must implement. And I'm going to demonstrate that in this case. So, but however, in Rust, interfaces are called traits. And you define a trait by using the trait keyword and then you type in the name of the trait. So let's say in this case, for example, let's say we're building an e-commerce store. We will have two types of stuff we are selling. One, we are selling subscription. And then the, on the other hand, we are also selling products. So these two, just like in the animal example, I gave you an example. In this case, these two stuff we are selling products and subscriptions will be able to have return their prices. Every product should have a price and every subscription you're selling should also have a price. So what we can do is to create a trait that both of them should implement. So we can call it prizable. Okay, so this is how you define a trait. So we are defining this trait that we call it prizable. And then in here, we can now define the behavior both of them should have. For example, we can define a function here that we call get price so both a subscription and also a product should be able to return their prices okay and we can then make this a method and then what is it going to return well let's say for prices let's say it's going to return a floating point value so f64 now the first thing you need to notice here is that we are not defining the body of the method so what we would have done is to open these curly braces and then start typing in what we needed to do. But just like interfaces in other languages, we don't need to do that. So we are just defining a rule to be followed. Now, let's define the subscription and the, and the product structs. So we have a subscription struct that will hold the name, the name of the subscription, and then the price, which will be of type F64. Then we also have a product, a struct called product with also names and prices. Okay, now in order to make sure that both subscription and products, we have this method inside here. We are going to say, implement this struct, prizable for subscription. Now, the first thing you will notice here is this. This is quite different from how you do it in other languages. In many other languages, you will do something like this. You say implement, and then you provide the interface, but that is different in Rust, okay? You have to use this implementation keyword and you say implement the thread for this struct. And then inside here, you can see that Rust is already warning us. And then you can say, it will say, not all threads, items implemented. So we must implement the get price method. And this is the beauty of using threads. It will force you to make sure that that method exists okay there's nothing stopping us from defining it directly without implementing this thread but in order to make sure that this method exists for this struct without any mistake we we'll use the thread implementation now to implement this the methods inside this thread if you're an IntelliJ you can hit or enter to implement the members and since this method is supposed to return f64 you can then go ahead and return it from here. Okay, now we'll do the same thing for the products as well. Okay, now we've implemented the same thread for the product struct. So now whenever we have an instance of product or subscription, we'll be absolutely sure that they have, that they all have the get price method. And that is what we wanted to achieve. 
Now, this is an idea that Rust has that is quite different from other languages. If you look up here, where we've defined this thread, you can see that this thread doesn't have anybody. Okay, but in Rust, there is something called default implementation, where we can actually give it a body right here. Okay, so in order to test that out, let's say we have another function. Okay, and then we'll make it a method as well. And then let's say it will return a string. Okay, and then we'll provide the default implementation. Now, this is not non existent in many other languages, but it's supported in Rust. What we're going to do here is just to return a string. So we can say something like info, and then we say price is equal to something. Okay. And then we format that using the format macro. You can now say self dot get price. Now, since we now have this default implementation, we can still access it from any of these structs without having to override them. We can actually override them if you want, but it's not really necessary. So let's test it out. Let's say here we have a pr product that we'll call uh, Let's just say product one and then the price will be 10.0, 10.9. Convert this to string. Okay, now let's try to get the info. So we can call product one dot get info. And then let's bring that to the terminal. You can say product one. And then we we'll print out the info here. Then let's run the code. And when we run the code, you see we got product one and then info. Yeah, we say price is equal to 10.9. So you can see that it works with the default implementation inside threads. You no longer have to override what you have here. But you can also override them if you want, just like this one that doesn't have a body as well. So bear in mind that this exists, as it's going to be very helpful to you. Now, another beautiful benefit of threads, just like in other languages, is when you have function parameters, for example. Let's say we have a function that we call by, for example, and then it will accept a, an item. Okay. And all I want to do is to print something to the terminal to show that it can be bought. Let's say, we say buy at price. And then we provide the price here. Now, what we need to do is to make sure that whoever calls this function will pass an argument that will be of type priceable. So what we need to do is to make sure that whoever is calling this item, this buy function, passes a an argument that we implement, we use the implementation keyword, and then we make sure that it will implement priceable. And then right here, we can now call get price. Now pay attention to what we did here. We are not asking for any struct instance, like a product or a subscription. We are asking for an instance of this thread, just like what you do in other languages. But the difference here is that we have to use this implementation keyword to show that this item must implement the prizable. So this will allow us to call this by function with either an instance of subscription or an instance of product. In fact, let me show you. Yes, so we have another instance that we'll call subscription one. And the price is 20.4. Now we can call by the function by and pass product one. And it's going to accept it. We can also call it and pass the subscription one. Let's just rename this to a small letter. Now we can call it and pass subscription one and they will all run without issues. Let's run the code. 
now we got buy at price 10.9 for this product instance and then at price 20.0 20.4 for this subscription instance so this is a way of allowing multiple types we are all the types implemented this particular trait now there is another way to do this which you might find a lot simpler okay so instead of doing it this way we can use generics which we covered in the last series so by the way this will be a two series video we are explaining threads and how to use them so in the last two videos i explained how generics work in rust and how to use them so you can check out those videos in the description as well so here instead of using this implementation keyword and providing the threads here you can use generics for example you can come in here and then so let's say t okay and then you use threat bounds to specify that this t which is a generic type will implement the prizable threat okay now that way all we have to do is to come in here and use t now there is a benefit to use to doing this this way and i'm going to show you soon so this should be prizable You see this seems to be more clear than using this implementation keyword now this will achieve the same thing and the benefit of doing this is you can accept a second item okay let's say item 2 where you say it will also be of type t however if we decided to do that here let's say we rename this to build 2 and we decide to accept an item 2 here then you find out that we will have to use this implementation keyword again okay and that will clutter this parameter section right here so the best thing to do in my opinion is to use generics in this case to achieve the same thing so that that way you can just use the generic parameter you provided here wherever you need to use them now another reason why it is better to use this thread bound syntax instead of doing it this way apart from the fact that if you decide to use if you decide to have another parameter that you will have to declare this implementation class again okay apart from that if you have another trait right here let's say if you have another trait right here that will call sellable okay to indicate that this product is sellable and then we decide to indicate that each item must implement the type prizable and also this new thread we define here called sellable then we have to go in here and then use this plus sign as we explored in the previous video and then specify sellable here okay and if we need to do that again we have to come in here and use this plus sign again and then in the case that this item 2 parameter will also be of these two types so this is more tedious to do however using this thread bound syntax is a lot better because all we have to do is to come in here and then using the same plus sign we can then indicate that this type t must implement the prizable and the sellable trait and that way we don't have to change anything here our code will remain much readable and more clean than what you have here so always go for this route now there is an even better way according to how you see it like we explored in the previous video where we explored how to use generics with struct by using the where clause so here you can see i will just duplicate this and then for that so just copy that and then paste it here so now instead of defining this thread bound here you can just remove them right and allow it to look this way and then right here okay after defining maybe our return type or something like that we then use the where clause here we say where and then we start defining we can now say t will be of type this okay now you might find this syntax a lot readable okay we are using this where clause but personally i actually like this better because you get to define 
everything right here okay this year class will allow you to we start occupying more lines and making your function to look a lot weird or a lot strange so i prefer this style you have the varieties of going with either this style or this style or this style so you choose what suits you better now finally in this part one it's also possible to define what in case if you're wondering what i'm what i did here this is unit in rust an empty tuple i've covered it in uh, in, uh, in the previous video which you can see in the description this is just a way of saying that this function will return void in other languages now what if we want to define that this function will also return something that implements prizable for example you can also do that so right here let's say we want to define that this build function will return a type that implements the prizable trait all we have to do is to come down here and then we did similar to what we did here by using this implementation keyword and then we say implement and then prizable so this way we've defined that this function by will return and will return a value that implemented this trait all we have to do is to go inside the block of code and then return item since it's going to implement that and you'll be fine so a quick recap you can define a trait and then define the functions inside as methods now each method can have a default implementation that way you no longer have to override them if you don't want to okay for each trait you can make a struct implement those traits by doing it this way and then defining the methods you want inside here and then again you can also define that a function parameter or a method parameter will accept a value of different types okay and you have different ways i showed you three ways to go about it it's either you use this implementation keyword for each function parameter or you use a generics as we've covered before and this is actually much cleaner or you can even use a weird clause here to specify what these generics are okay so this is the part one in the next part we're going to go even deeper in, into traits in rust and how to use them so make sure you like the video and subscribe so that you get notified when we release more videos